Uh, welcome back. It's the Business Insight and Plus TV Africa to my discussion segment. I have joining me now international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights, Mukhtar. Always a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for always having me. All right. Yesterday, I tried to do a bit of an explainer of uh, the whole Naira float because it was actually like uh, making headlines everywhere. But today, let me hear from you. You are the economist. Uh, just try and break it down to me what uh, it means to float the Naira. Well, what it means to float the Naira is that Justin can go to any market and the market now is the bank and then go beside uh, Peru the change and the price is buying in, uh, in Peru the change might be slightly different from the price is buying in the market in the banking hall but again at the end of the day very soon Justin will be buying both what you can go to the Peru the change it's 500 naira you can go to the to to the bank it's 500 naira and it's readily available that's all the whole idea of floating the naira is the it's price mechanism yeah, and price is determined by demand and supply, buyers and seller agreement. That's just what it means to float the naira. No more fixed exchange rate. Uh, oh, fix it, this amount, this up. That's just the difference. Okay, fine. I, it makes more sense now. But in the short run right now, a lot of people are saying that uh, they actually uh, buy naira at a more expensive um, rate compared to what um, uh, the official market price used to be. So you really think uh, floating the naira is a bit of an advantage or what would you really say? And the term, you could see that happening, like what is happening now. Um, the, the, the import export window started with uh, Naira floating at um, a parallel market price of 750. At the end of the day, it closed at 664. Then yesterday, I think it closed at 701. And the parallel market is still doing, uh, um, I think the parallel market is still doing uh, 750 as, as of today. Now, you expect that to, to continue um, in the short term, but in the long term, you still stability. Now, it all depends on wanting liquidity. Do we have enough of it in the, in, the, in the official market or do we have enough of it in the parallel market? If we have enough of it in the parallel market and a lot of people are feel more comfortable going to the parallel market because of the slim nation, the slimless na uh, nature of getting those uh, effects there. You could see that we keep going high because a lot of people be going there, there will not be so much supply for them. But if we have it in the uh, official window, a lot of people can go there and just get it and, and, and transact their business. So it all depends on, um, on the availability of the, of, of, of the dollar, especially the dollar, not necessarily the Naira. So if we have it available, it's just in the short term, you could see all those market forces uh, mm. driving it or driving it down. But there will come to a point that it's going to be stable. We've been this route before. Um, the only challenge is that we, we didn't continue with the floating. Mm. In 2017, when uh, President Buhari came in, we had those exchanges that went to a height of about 550. And the CBN governor floated and said, okay, let's float the Naira. The first day of the floating of the Naira, it was 550. It went to, but later on, we, we stabilized at 360. And at the point, we really changed, we have been 355. And it was like that for a very, very long time, mm. for up to three years before we had the uh, COVID and stock term that definitely affected the exchange rate also. All right, let's just uh, take it um, step by step and look at the impact on some uh, various categories of um, people and, of course, um, key players. For instance, now, I, I have um, actually uh, gone to the bank to get um, FX uh, for my, uh, maybe my nephews uh, who are actually studying abroad. And I've actually, uh, uh, it was done at the, at the price of um, the former rate, which was um, uh, 460 or thereabouts at um, the official rate of the CBN. So what happens now to students who are actually paying school fees? Uh, uh, for those who have actually booked ahead before now and uh, those who are booking uh, subsequently? No, those, if, if, if I think I, I, I need a clarification on that and I got some clarification that if your FX has been approved, mm -hmm. Before at 400 and something, you yes. still get it. If oh, you still get it at that. You get it okay. at that rate. But mm. if it has not been approved, it's a new, uh, uh, maybe you applied, it has not been approved. Then by the time it's approved, you get it at the new rate. Mm. Okay, let's talk about businesses now that, uh, you know, have taken also some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, dollar-denominated investment in the past. 
how would they be affected? But specifically for Nigeria that has uh, some foreign debt, does it mean that we will be paying more going forward to actually service our debts? Exactly, we'll be paying more. Um, because at the time we collected that uh, maybe at the last time they were calculating the they were calculating it at market price of four hundred and uh, so, uh, 460. So now it will be calculated today. We want to use what we the close of market yesterday is 701 to a dollar. So definitely, without doing anything, without collecting any more debt, our debt profile has gone up. Wow. So there's nothing we, we, we really can do. So that means that uh, we have to be looking at some other place uh, to look for money to pay our debts. <laughs> well, um, yes. But again, what happened is that uh, what we think we are losing in terms of the devaluation of the currency or the price mechanism yeah. of the currency will, will gain in terms of uh, not paying subsidy. So that uh, most of the money that we're going to subsidy will end up coming to our to our reserve. And so we have enough to pay off some of our debt. And also we we'll begin to attract uh, foreign direct investor, foreign investor, remittance, and uh, I mean, uh, remittance from Nigeria, the diaspora, and also the non-oil uh, sector. We we'll begin to attract a lot of efforts from that sector. Remember why we've not been able to attract efforts from that sector is that when they bring in their effects, CBN collected from them and giving them at the market official rate, mm. which was 470 something. And they are like, why should I get this? So some of them created the means whereby you don't get these efforts coming back into the system. They reinvest it over there and then come back here and then collect more effects. And also when they collect Naira from CB and do their business, and when FX is coming in, they find a way around. So um, that will stop. And you mustn't forget the RX 200. That was another policy that was mm -hmm. really uh, uh, taking a lot of money out of the out of the uh, uh, reserve without us knowing details of what these companies are, how much have they contributed, how much have they collected. With this new policy, there's a little there's transparency, and so you won't see those um, uh, efforts going out and like they used to go out without. It. So they'll find their way, settle down in the reserve, and once you have enough of that. Um, effects in the reserve that you'll be able to uh, um, intervene. Let, let me tell, let me make people clear up. Okay. The floating of the Naira does not mean that the CBN will not pump liquidity into the system when needed. Anytime the CBN feels that the Naira is underpriced, they will pump in liquidity into the system, but they will not be the one to fix it. They also will be like a market player uh, in the system also. That's what it is. Okay, so basically what you're telling me that um, th there's a good side for us investors, specifically those who are actually exporting, uh, but uh, it will actually discourage importation, right? It will, I mean, it will encourage, um, uh, it will discourage importation um, in, in, in a way, but again, the government also has to have a human face that we, we cannot produce all, all, we all, we, uh, all we need. Mm. Just like um, the Kenya experience, you could look at some of the goods that you think we normally need very well, Again, then you begin to remove duties on them. And then you look at some of the goods that you think we can produce if we have the enabling environment, but that is the most greater enabling environment, and begin to charge high duties on it. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you don't need to, I mean, the 41 buying items, instead of you banning them from having effects, you just tell them that they pay high duty for bringing in those costs of those goods and services. That could encourage them to begin to think of establishing it here in Nigeria. Instead of you telling them you're banned, they'll find other ways to gain effects. And most of these 41 ban items are items that Nigerians generally generally uh, want want to make use of. So you, you, need, you need to also look at that also. So it's a, it, it, it all depends on the um, the, the implementation of this policy. All right. Uh, in my head, uh, Mokta, I'm thinking that another set of people that would actually be smiling to the bank or would benefit uh, from this, uh, maybe the state governors, are they likely to get more from their federal allocations? Because I don't know, I hear that it is expected to increase by about 20%, all things being equal. Do you uh, actually agree yeah. with that? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it will increase for them. Because again, uh, like I said, the RX200 uh, funds also that normally goes out will find its way into the reserve. NNPC have not remitted a single cover for the past nine, almost over a year now. 
because they say they are using it to pay subsidy. So subsidy is gone. So those money will find their hands into the state coffer. But hopefully we believe that they will be able to use this money well. That's my only challenge. But definitely the state government will end more now with the removal of subsidy. All right, uh, Mokhtar, I know you and I had talked about um, Naira devaluation uh, when um, this uh, unified exchange uh, rate uh, uh, actually come on spring. Is that what is the case right now? And uh, are there other effects? Because uh, just uh, yesterday, uh, the NB has released uh, inflation rates uh, for May, and it actually has jumped to 22.41%. How do we see all of this impacting on the economy generally, specifically inflation? And uh, would our Naira devalue or be devalued? Uh, much later. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at inflation. Uh, I must tell you that inflation will go up. Um, the marginal increase that you see here now uh, was remember the president came in this inflation report is from May. May yeah, the president okay. made the announcement in May 29. So mm. we just have maybe just two days of those record added to the value of May, and yet you saw those figures. So by we will see a fully. Mm. Uh, 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 um, impact of his policy removal of subsidy identification of the exchange rate when the June um, the June uh, 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 inflationary figure comes out. Now, so when you look at that, Trump will say, okay, inflation will go up because you have floated your currency is selling at it, it's been um, gotten at a high um, high rate now. But don't forget that over ninety percent of the manufacturers. Those that have FSO terms that their business get it from the parallel market, which is at 750. Mm. So it's not supposed to cause so much any uh, so much impact on the inflationary figure because that is already priced in. Now the other one that may be a challenge is those that normally have from the government side a fiscal window. So they will have to hike their prices. But how many of them remember what the manufacturer? So what we see now, if they are able to assess the official market, which I think will happen, mm. definitely some of these goods price will come down. Okay, before in the we, long run. In the long run. So before we let you go now, for the common man in the street who does not really affect, um, understand all of all these uh, macroeconomic issues, uh, I want to bring it to the microeconomics level. Should they have anything to worry about in terms of food prices and all of that? Well, they should have something to worry about in terms of food prices. When I said the price in, I told you about um, mm. those importing goods, we price okay. it in. But those that produce good locally, we look at the transportation. Okay. Because transportation has actually gone up. So they will price it into their goods. Mm. So we'll definitely we'll see those price hike in household items, especially those that are produced here because of the transportation as a result of the removal subsidy, okay. where prices have gone up. And know that um, majority of our transactions Transportation means a true PMS, that's normal petrol. True, so true. definitely you see price come up. I don't expect them to be a total pass some of those burden onto the consumer. So goods will go up. But when we start having stability, maybe when the palliative comes in, whether palliative will come in, in the area of reduction, in the area of taxes, in the area, so you could see a drop in uh, a food price. But in the in, in July, June um, uh, MBS report, I expect to see right. a, a high inflation, a spark in inflation, I think, but not so much like people think it will be. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mokta. Always a pleasure getting all of this useful um, insight and analysis about the economy from you. We do appreciate all of them. Thank you so much, Justin. Happy pleasant week. Uh, you too, uh, Mokta. Well, that's the size of the show for today. I must say a very big thank you to all of you who have actually sat back to watch the show from Monday to Friday. Business Insight will return to your screen 9.30 a.m. on Monday. Do join us again and have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.